You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Reynolds from Summer Properties Northwest, Reynolds & Klein Appraisal, and your host of this episode of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Today, we are talking about defunding Seattle. Last month, the White House designated Seattle, New York, and Portland as anarchist cities. Going to defund them. Defund Seattle. That's what we're talking about. Before we jump into it, um, and uh, we're talking about that, but we're talking about that because those three cities are suing the White House, suing the federal government and saying, oh, no, don't defund us. We, now we know you're serious. Oh, don't defund us. Before we jump on into that, my content is getting our content here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast is getting censored. It is getting blocked. The best thing you can do if you feel that this is content that should be shared and get out there is to share it. Hit that little share thing, send it to your friends, family, whomever. Hit the like button and uh, also subscribe. That lets uh, YouTube know, all right, even though we don't like this guy's content, we're still going to put it out there because we want to make money. And if we don't put his content out there, nobody's going to see it, can't charge him. That's the way this business goes. All right, let's jump on in. Seattle, Portland, New York, sue over Trump's anarchy label. This is an article from Cairo 7. Anarchy label. We've been labeled anarchist here in Seattle. I wonder why that is. Why is that that Seattle has been labeled anarchist, or even Portland for that matter? What about Portland qualifies as an anarchist? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's unknown, right? <laughs> New York, Seattle, and Portland, three cities recently labeled anarchist jurisdictions by the U.S. Justice Department, filed a lawsuit Thursday to invalidate the designation and fight off the Trump administration's efforts to withhold federal dollars. This is a reaction to last month's happenings where White House and federal government basically said, yep, you guys are anarchists. The Trump administration's political threats against Seattle and other Democratic cities are unlawful and an abuse of federal power, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin said in a news release announcing the federal lawsuit. It's immoral, unconstitutional, and shameful that we are forced to expend any resources on this political theater. Let's take a quick look at that. What's happened here in the city of Seattle in the last week or so? I don't know, a federal judge in the Western District Court, they're allowing a lawsuit to go forward against the city of Seattle because they basically created an anarchist environment with CHOP. That's what's going on. So is there a legal precedent? Is, is there ongoing legal stuff that says, yeah, Seattle, you're pretty much, you stepped into a into a um, land of anarchy over the summer with CHOP. And if you haven't followed this story, this is a lawsuit by homeowners that lived in CHOP and business owners that had businesses in CHOP. I know a handful of these people. I've had a little bit of contact with a handful of these people. And they're like, yeah, we didn't have any police. We didn't have any services. We didn't have any traffic because these anarchists basically blocked off the intersections with concrete barriers that the city of Seattle provided to them. If I don't, if that is an anarchy, I don't know what is. Before we get into this much further, let's take a look at the definition of anarchy. All right, definition of anarchy by Merriam-Webster is absence of government, A state of lawlessness or political disorder due to the absence of governmental authority. Does that fit in with the definition of what happened in Seattle this this summer? I think so. I I really do. I think it did. That's what we had. There was no police presence there. There just wasn't. You didn't have police presence. You couldn't get uh, medical aid in there when people were shot. That was a no-go. Um just general anarchy. And if you visited there like I did multiple times, you'd be kind of like, oh, this is pretty sketchy. This is not, this is not good. And of course, it didn't last because it devolved into just mayhem, right? I mean, it just did. So let's get back here. And what I wanted to do is, do you think the business owners and the locals, people that own homes and condos in CHOP, formerly known as CHAZ, do you think that 
when they're looking at the city of Seattle, they might make this statement too. It's immoral, unconstitutional, and shameful that we are forced to expend any resources on this political theater. Do you think that group that has a lawsuit against the city of Seattle for what the city of Seattle did to them, do you think they might make that same statement? Yeah, I think so. And they are with a lawsuit that has been reviewed by a Western District federal court judge. And he has said, yep, keep this bad boy going. You're allowed to proceed. All right. President Donald Trump issued a more memorandum last month that sought to identify localities that permit anarchy, violence and destruction in American cities. This is following riots that took place uh, during anti-police and anti-racism protests after George Floyd's killing by Minneapolis police. The Justice Department last month identified New York City, Portland, Oregon and Seattle as three cities that could have federal funding slashed. So that is why these three cities are suing the federal government because they've been identified for what they have done. Portland has still got some of this protest going on. And what does the city of Portland do? Ah, we know you guys have been at this for now, like what, 150 days. But, you know, we, we've tried to tell you to tone it down. The mayor's gotten real worked up. And in his own way, he's kind of said, oh, we need this to stop because this is not a good look. The ongoing nightly protests in Portland, everybody has long since forgotten the political message there, but they just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And those are anarchists. That's what you got going on there. All right. So the lawsuit ridiculed the designation. Hmm calling the president's action offensive to both the Constitution and common sense and describing the notion of anarchist jurisdictions, an oxymoronic designation without precedent in American jurisprudence. Have we ever had a time period in the United States where we have had an area like CHOP? Has there ever been an area where there's been no police presence in the United States? I don't think so. So would that qualify for a precedent in American jurisprudence? I don't know. It's a really good question, though, right? But it also noted that the consequences of withholding federal money during a pandemic are deadly serious. You know what's also the consequences of withholding police protection in an area? Those are also deadly serious. And that is what happened at CHOP. And that is kind of what we're talking about here. And I think the rest of the world is just like, not just the United States, the rest of the world is like, what is going on? Who allows this? It's our city's government. That's who's allowing it. And guess what? This is the summer of love. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about the summer of love that went wildly sideways. And now we've got three cities that are saying, ah, oh, don't defund us. We we didn't really mean that whole anarchist thing. We didn't really mean anarchy. Don't defund us. That's bottom line here. I said weeks ago, this is Mayor Bill de Blasio from New York City. I said weeks ago, if the Trump administration persisted in trying to illegally take away funding from New York City, we would take them to court and we will beat them in court. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said Thursday. All right. The lawsuit filed in U.S. District Court in Seattle argues that unless Congress says otherwise, the president can't add conditions to money Congress has appropriated. The cities say the designation was arbitrary and capricious and based on vague and subjective factors. The lawsuit also alleges that the administration violated due process rights and the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, which specifies that powers not given to the federal government, such as local policing, uh, policing authority, are reserved for the states. We'll just have to see how all this plays out. I am not a legal expert by any means. I'm kind of just running you through the story. But the way I see it, I don't know. Seattle? I, uh, and Portland, for sure. I don't know. I haven't been to New York. So I kind of only talk about places I've been to and I experienced I've experienced both Portland and Seattle, um, Portland just for one day and one night. But it was enough to kind of say, all right, I've seen this before. This is what's going on. That was um, same drill as Seattle. Just Seattle's was a much bigger area over the course of a month. Portland's was over a very, very small area impacted. But it's been over the course of I literally think it's like 150 days now. I, I can't even tell you but it's much less in Portland now, but um, still ongoing as far as I know. It's the defendants 
not the cities who are engaging in lawless behavior and threatening the democratic order established by the framers, the lawsuit said. The defendants, not the cities, who are engaging in lawless behavior and threatening the democratic order established by the framers. But city leadership is allowing the defendants to engage in this behavior and not doing anything. That is what is creating the state of anarchy. That's what created the state of anarchy in CHOP. No police. Police left the East Precinct. No police. Can't get medical help in there. In CHOP, you had a bunch of these medics, and I say quote-unquote medics because there were guys running around who may have had some medical training, probably not. They had medic on their shirts, and if you go down to, when I was there at Portland, you would see like an old used ambulance and that would be their medic team. And they had people manning it and they had medical supplies, but they're not real medics. And that's because the real medics can't get into these areas. And guess what? They don't really want to because you don't know what you're going to get. Watch some of the footage of when during some of the shootings that happened at CHOP, police tried to get in because police have to go and secure the scene before medics go in. And guess what? It's just this crazy outlaw scene that shouldn't happen in a city. And that is the basis for the designation for anarchy for New York, Seattle, and Portland. All right. The Justice Department did not immediately respond to an email seeking comment, as they will not. They will figure it out and they'll release some statement that basically says, we fully support this lawsuit. We believe it has merit. And this is what we're doing. New York City Corporation Council Jim Johnson, who owned, who joined de Blasio at the mayor's daily briefing, said the cities are suing now because the federal government has begun taking concrete steps to withhold funds. Uh Uh-oh, we're really doing this. Defund Seattle. They've actually taken this anarchist designation and started to include it in applications for federal grants, Johnson said. As much as $12 billion in federal money affecting health, transportation, and law enforcement programs could be at stake. $12 billion with a B. That's a big number. Uh, In one example cited in the lawsuit, the Federal Transit Administration announced this month that it will consider applications for a current COVID-19 public transportation research grant in accordance with the anarchist memo. So they're looking at this application along with the anarchist memo and going, well, I don't know, you anarchist cities, just not looking good for you. This is not looking good. Justice Department said the three cities were designated as anarchist jurisdictions because they met criteria, including whether a jurisdiction forbids the police force from intervening to restore order. That happened at CHOP. Um, Amid widespread or sustained violence or destruction. That happened at CHOP for sure. And whether the city disempowers or defunds police departments. Huh. Seems like we're in the midst of that as well, right? That is ongoing. That's what's happening here in Seattle. Defund the police. And then the other side's going, defund Seattle. What a mess. For New York, Attorney General William Barr cited increased unrest, gun violence, and property damage as the city council cut $1 billion from the police department's budget for next year. That's in New York. And... um, You know, what's funny is that the lawsuit by the business owners and the residents of CHOP, they basically stated the same thing. Increased unrest, gun violence, and property damage in their lawsuit. For Portland, he cited the continuous protests and vandalism, and he accused Seattle of permitting anarchy in the Capitol Hill-occupied protest, CHOP, a protest zone of a few city blocks that officials cleared out months ago. Cleared it out July 1st. Yours truly was there right on the front lines. So I could say yours truly was there right on the front lines and not have to read about it as the third person because I was there. All three cities have previously challenged Trump administration actions successfully. Those include Seattle and Portland's efforts against the administration's plan to withhold money for so-called sanctuary cities and New York's efforts against adding a citizenship question to the census and excluding undocumented migrants from the census count. All right, that stuff, um, that to me is add-on to this 
kind of really complex issue. But the, the real thing here, I think, is that the Trump administration is saying, we're putting you guys on notice. We're really going to do this, whether it's legal or not. I don't know. I am not a legal expert, but I do know this is happening. And in the city of Seattle, you've got homeowners and business owners going, hey, you basically violated our rights and you owe us some money. And what I what I'm watching for is if that becomes um, a class action lawsuit, that could be big, big money that the city of Seattle will have to pay out during a pandemic when tax revenue is way, way down. City of Seattle is working on their 2021 budget right now. And there's a lot of discussion about Mayor Durkin is no longer doing a $30 million payout for I can't remember specifically what it was, but it was a new story. And I should know this, but I just I haven't done a podcast on it yet. There are so many new stories happening here in Seattle that are just like, what? How is that? How is this? How is this even going on? It's like we live in this weird alternate like Westworld, the show on HBO Westworld. It's like just this bizarre amount of stuff going on. So I find it so interesting that I can read these quotes from the mayor, and they would apply directly to the opposite side, the people that were hurt during the chop process, the people that were wronged, the people who have a legal right to say, we're going to sue you. And here's why. And then the city of Seattle is saying, oh, don't sue us. Federal government, don't defund us. We didn't do anything wrong. Well, Western District of Court says otherwise. They're kind of saying, well, I've looked at this, and I'm going to allow this lawsuit to keep moving forward. They didn't say, no, we're tossing it out. You're done. Your lawsuit's gone. They're allowing it to move forward. So these are all super interesting stories that as they unfold, I will cover them right here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. But this big federal one, that's a big one. Defund Seattle, defund Portland, defund New York. Will it happen? I don't think so. But guess what? Other cities moving on down the road, they're going to think twice about allowing some of this stuff to happen. They're going to think twice about having the summer of love happen in their backyard. They're going to be like, yeah, we don't really want to get defunded by the federal government. We don't really want to have to spend any federal resources defending a lawsuit at that level. So guess what? Policemen, do your job. Arrest those guys. Prosecutors, do your job. Judges, throw these guys in jail for a long time. Get them off the streets. That's what we need. That is my message. All right. I'm Sean Reynolds from Summer Properties Northwest, Reynolds and Klein Appraisal. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye until then. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.